In a truly tragic incident, a baby and his two-year-old sister have been mauled to death by their family pit bulls, leaving their mother in a critical condition. Baby Hollis and two-year-old Lily died on Wednesday after being attacked by their two family pit bulls. Their mother Kirsty is currently in hospital in a critical condition after she tried to save them from the incident. After the accident, both children were sadly pronounced dead at the scene at their home in Shelby County, Tennessee. It's reported that their father Colby was unharmed, but it is unknown yet whether he was at home during the accident. Kirsty was reportedly taken to Regional One Health with critical injuries. A family friend told DailyMail.com she is hanging in there. Further details about how the tragedy unfolded is yet to emerge, although the dogs have been taken away by local animal control. An investigation into the attack is ongoing, yet the reason behind why the dogs became so aggressive is still unknown. Our thoughts with Kirsty, Colby and their whole family during this time. Real photos are extremely traumatizing. Um, so instead of having you guys, you know, be curious, I'm going to explain the photos to you guys. It's extremely graphic. If you can't deal with that, please scroll through. I'm going to share some photos, but these photos does not show any form of body parts or anything graphic. It just shows Dahmer's apartment and the containers he kept the body parts. So here's one of the Polaroid photos. Um, this is where, you know, that's his fish tank and we all recognize kind of like that way it looks from the TV series. Here's another photo and in that freezer, there were body parts. That is so disturbing. So in this photo, you can see that they were actually taking that freezer for a reason. And that is because he kept a lot of skeletons that he bleached in there as well as body parts. And I'm talking about genitals, heads, etc. I mean, it's so disturbing. In this Polaroid photo, you can see his bedroom. Um, it is led to believe that Tony Hughes' body was left in there for three days before he dismembered his body. I don't know the story behind this one, um, but there's another Polaroid photo and it looks like it's his closet that looks like a pillow. I'm not sure. Here's another photo. This is a container filled with more body parts. It is Ugh, disturbing, extremely disturbing. And one of the Polaroid photos, a very disturbing one I could not share at all. It's basically, it is one of his victims in a bathtub. His rib cage was cut open. And honestly, it looks like he also cut off the genitals. This is really, 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 really disturbing. Please do not look this up. Another Polaroid photo that was very disturbing was it looked like Dahmer had body parts across a table. He had someone's head his genitals, and his hands cut out. It, it looks, it's very disturbing. Went through the photos so that you guys wouldn't have to. I don't want anyone else to get traumatized. Just please listen to me when I say it's really, really graphic. I don't recommend anyone looking for it and I will not be sharing where you can find them. So more on the Excelsior Springs case. The woman who managed to escape says she has been there since September. The neighbor who helped her, this is her granddaughter. I was able to find a clip of her interview. She said that she was sitting there and a lady come banging on the door and she heard screaming. And she opened the door and the lady said, you gotta help me. She said, I've been raped, I've been held captive. She's like, you gotta help me, he's, he's gonna kill me. She's wow. seen the state she was in and she brought her in, she sat her down on my couch and wrapped her in a blanket I had on my couch and grabbed food and water. She, she, she was weak and she had a metal dog collar around her neck mm -hmm. and duct tape, which we're kind of guessing that her, was around her mouth mm -hmm. that she had maybe pulled down. My grandma said she had ligature marks on her wrists. And she said- restricting her breathing? Yeah, it was restricting her breathing. She said that they couldn't cut it with scissors or anything, whatever it was made of. And she said that they did cut it some and they were able to loosen it so she could breathe, but that they had left it there. And my grandma said she was clothed she okay. had some like short shorts on mm -hmm. and she, she said she didn't have much on but she did have some clothes on okay but she's like that was the le last thing i was even thinking about and she said that she did say she made the comment that my friends didn't make it out he killed my friends they didn't make a, make it out did she give any um indication as to how many of her friends no no she just said friends yeah she just kept saying that because she, she was worried about her friends she said she had been there since september was that early september she 
This is the case of Princess Doe and how someone confessed to her murder in 2005, but it wasn't until 40 years later that police were finally able to close the case. On Thursday, July 15, 1982, a gravedigger working at the Cedar Ridge Cemetery in Blairstown, New Jersey, noticed a chain and a crucifix lying in the dirt. As he walked closer to the wooded area, he discovered the body of a young girl. He immediately called the police and Lieutenant Kranz arrived to the scene and began to investigate. Kranz figured that the case would be solved quickly, that he would find some type of identification on the young girl and then notify her family about her death. However, when he turned over the girl's body, he realized that she had been badly beaten and that her face was unrecognizable. So Kranz started looking at her clothing to see if he could find any type of clues and this is what she was wearing and she also had light brown shoulder length hair and she wasn't wearing any underwear, stockings, shoes or socks. She also didn't have any type of identification on her. The medical examiner determined that her cause of death was blunt trauma to the face and head with multiple fractures and the ME also said that there were defensive wounds on the girl's arms and hands. She was a fighter and she tried to stop her attacker. Unfortunately, since her skull was smashed into pieces and she was so badly beaten, the medical examiner could not determine her eye color. What they did know about her was that she was a white female between the ages of 14 to 18 years old. She was 5'2", about 110 pounds, had both ears pierced, and she had also never been pregnant or given birth. Lieutenant Cran said she was erased. Her assailant erased her. There was nothing left for her. Whoever did this did it with vengeance. Lieutenant Kranz was really moved by this young girl's death, and he said that at one point, she was somebody's princess. Somebody once cared for her. So instead of calling her just another Jane Doe, he decided to call her Princess Doe. He said that he didn't want to bury her yet because he was hoping that her parents would come forward and claim her, but they never did. So six months later, members of the community and the police force gathered together to raise money and hold a funeral for Princess Doe. Her headstone read, Princess Doe, missing from home, dead among strangers, remembered by all. Born, question mark, found July 15th, 1982. At one point, Lieutenant Kranz put Princess Doe's clothing on a mannequin and he invited members of the press and members of the community to come look at the clothing, take photos of it, and help spread the word. His hope is that someone would look at the clothes and recognize them and realize that this was their missing daughter, their missing sister, their missing friend. Now, a few people did come forward and said that they owned this exact skirt and that they had bought it at a dress store in Long Island. This wasn't the only time that Long Island had come up in the investigation. On May 5, 2005, a written letter was delivered to the New Jersey police and it was sent from a man named Arthur Kinlaw, who lived in Long Island. So back in the 80s, Arthur Kinlaw moved between different areas of Long Island and ran a blank ring with his wife Donna. In June of 1998, Arthur and Donna were arrested for fraud and during this investigation, one of their former blanks came forward and said that they had killed a woman named Linda. In order to save herself from a life sentence, Donna turned on her husband. This is everything we know about Rex Orange County's charges. A woman over the age of 16 alleges that the 22-year-old sexually assaulted her six times. Twice in West London, once in a taxi, and three times at his home. She says it occurred on June 1st and 2nd in London. A month later, Alexander posted this, canceling the rest of his tours. He said it was due to unforeseen personal circumstances and didn't mention the charges at all. But the truth did eventually come out, he's been charged with six counts of sexual assault. His trial will start January 3rd next year. It's expected to last three days. But if you'd prefer pink, or vermilion, or chartreuse. Though you might make me jealous. No way! You're not sewing buttons in my eyes! Oh, but we need a yes! But if you'd prefer pink, or vermilion, or chartreuse. Though you might make me jealous. No way! You're not sewing buttons in my eyes! Oh, but we need a yes! Hey kids, nice to meet ya. Are you ready for some fast bear pizza? Who's this? Working at the night shift. I don't know, but I don't think I like him. He's so cute, I can feel his heart racing. Did you know we are less than two weeks away from the next scheduled execution in the United States? The next execution will take place on October 20th, 2022 in Oklahoma, and it is for a man named Benjamin Cole. In 2004, Benjamin Cole was sentenced to capital punishment after being found guilty for the unaliving of his nine-month-old daughter, Brianna Cole. So let's talk about exactly what happened on that night. On the night of December 20th of 2002, Benjamin was playing video games when his daughter Brianna started crying. He attempted to get her to stop crying, but after being unsuccessful, he said, quote, 
He grabbed her by the ankles and pushed her legs towards her head until she flipped over. She stopped crying after this happened, so he put her back in the crib and went back to continue to play video games. He was later confronted by his wife on what was wrong with Brianna as she was unresponsive in her crib. He originally denied having any involvement or knowing what was wrong with her, and he told his wife to call 911 while he proceeded to do CPR on Brianna. By the time paramedics did arrive, it was unfortunately too late and Brianna had passed away. Now, foul play was obviously immediately suspected, and they did an autopsy on Brianna, which revealed the following. Brianna's spine was snapped in half. Her aorta had been completely torn through due to non-accidental stretching, and her official COD was described as a fracture of the spine with aortic laceration. The spending broke Brianna's spine and tore her abdominal aorta asunder. After that, Brianna stopped crying. The state also said Cole, quote, went back to his video game and left Brianna to die in agony in her crib. Now, although Benjamin did initially deny having anything to do with what happened to Brianna, he did eventually confess and stated that he was the person responsible for what happened to her. On December 26 of 2002, Benjamin was officially charged with first-degree unaliving of a child. He went to trial in October of 2004 and was found guilty by a jury, and they did recommend the capital punishment for sentencing. Now, Benjamin's team has recently been trying to get rid of the capital punishment by stating that Benjamin is not competent to be executed. However, in July of 2002, a mental health evaluation was inducted on Benjamin to ensure that he was competent, and the court did determine that he was. A psychologist examined him and stated he denied ever having hallucinations, knew his execution date was set for October 20th, and knew he was being put to unaliving for the unaliving of his baby daughter. According to the psychologist, he was fully aware of why he was being executed and stated that he hoped his spirit would return to my father in heaven. So as of right now, Benjamin Cole will be executed by lethal injection on October 20th at 10 a.m. And before I end this video, I would like to send my sincerest condolences to Brianna's mother and her family for what they have gone through.